I was trying to get a little sip before we all started. Good afternoon. This is Carrie back with How to Homeschool My Child. Let me get a little bit of water. I have a, I have a little bit of congestion and um, can't really hear out of my ears. So this will be very interesting. But I decided, hey, uh, I've told everyone I would be here, so I am going to be here. So today what I want to do is talk about screens and social media and all that kind of stuff. But before I do, I thought I had my links, I do want to make a couple reminders. Um, and if someone could just put a comment saying, you sound okay, you can understand my words, that would be helpful because what I'm hearing in my ears is like not normal. So that would be really helpful. Hey, Carrie Rose. Hey, Rose. Carrie Rose. Anyway. Thank you. Um, so tomorrow at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll be giving our class three clues to keep Christ in Christmas. If you have not had a chance to sign up for that, let me just leave a comment here. And this will take you to my blog. And it should be the top post right there. It's not the exact registration. But anyway, that will get you there. And then... A week from Tuesday, next Tuesday, we will be hosting a um, our October Facebook Live. I was going to grab that one too, and then we'll get started because I have a lot to cover. And it is going to be is called Alternatives to Halloween. So we will be talking about things that you could do instead of Halloween. Timer. Um, and so let me put a link to that too, and then I'll be done with my links. Where are they? So while I'm doing that, um, why don't y'all write anything or leave a comment? Oh, well, that's just a long Facebook thing. Um, we are talking about screens. One week ago today, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp were all down. And I was just curious. Leave a comment in um, the comment section. How did that affect y'all? Or did it affect you? Maybe you're never on during the daytime. Uh, did, how did it affect your kids? How did it affect your home? How did it affect your homeschool? If you were taking online classes, oh no, not online classes, but if you were, uh, your kids had to be in a group on Facebook, they may not have been able to get on there. You know, sometimes I've wondered, is, are they having withdrawals? Um, or maybe you ended up having more time with the kids, more time to focus on what's important. And it made me start thinking that too often this thing that just went off gets our heart and tends to uh, take care, like focus us and push us down the wrong thing. So we are going to talk today about screens and I'm going to try to watch. Hi, JR. I'm going to try to watch comments at the same time. I'll uh, check them out every so often. But I will tell you that when I ask moms their biggest challenge um, or what causes the most drama, one there are several, there's the top three or four things, but one of them is this. This is it, and especially when it has to do with your kids. So we are going to talk about that. How do you, why is that a problem? And if you have any ideas, any um, tips, please leave a comment here. We are here to help each other. I Sorry, and I did tell you at the beginning in case you missed it. I have a little bit of congestion. Mm. And I can't even drink out of a straw. thought I'd put it a little higher. Um, if you have any ideas about why y'all struggle with screens, leave it there. How do you overcome that? That's what we're going to spend most of the time here. But we need to, I think even, it sounds sort of silly, but we need to identify what screens are. Because most of us think of, oh, the phone, the iPad, the computer, the Kindle. But let me tell you, right on the other side of this wall is our TV. And when I was raising kids, that was the screen. And it still is. I mean, I think most people still watch their TV. And so that is something we need to remember as well. Um, when I was raising kids, no smartphones, all dumb phones. There, you, you didn't connect your phone to the internet. So we had other issues like the TV. Um, so we had to monitor it. 
And it would be so easy to just say, hey, kids, yeah, go watch TV, and then take three or four hours to just sort of get my focus and be able to spend time doing things that I want to. But that is not what's best for our kids, and you and I know that. So what we want to do today is first we want to talk about moms, and then we're going to talk about kids. So when I, and I, some of these stories I've shared many times, but when my kids were in high school, we were living in Idaho, and between the living room over here and the uh, kitchen breakfast area, you had to sort of, right here was an office, a very small office. And I had this fear that whenever my, my kids would remember mom from high school years, and all they would remember is the back of my head staring at the computer. So I had to really be intentional. For me, the, in that situation, I didn't get on the computer until after lunchtime. Now, we may have to print something out, but I did not spend a designated time because I had to use the computer for our business. And I worked on the computer, but I did it in the afternoons. So we had face-to-face -face time and no screen time and none of these because we didn't have any smartphone. We did get on the TV because we had videos to watch. My kids in high school had a video series uh, for humanities. And twice a week we watched uh, uh, a lecture. So we did use screens, but they were not like constantly in there. So that's my story. What are you concerned about? What is it that you're concerned about as well with your kids? Let's just... Um, I'm going to give you just ideas. These are ideas that have worked for me. They may work for you. I don't know, but I'm going to share them and say. On my phone, there are about three apps that get notification. The texting app, I guess four, because the phone, the actual calling and voicemail, because I have parents that still, that's how they, well, they're actually pretty good at texting. So I do get a notification for the phone, texting and calling. I get a notification for WhatsApp, which is my texting app for all my friends in El Salvador. And then group me, because that's how my kids and I communicate. That's how my life group communicates. I get a daily prayer request on group me. I don't have group me just for buckets of friends. That's it. I get no notifications for Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, no social media, and definitely not any email. If I got a notification every time I got an email on this phone, I would get nothing done. It, I would just be spending all my time on this phone. So number one thing for you, and even maybe for your children, depending on their ages, is get rid of all the notifications. Use the phone as a tool so that when it is time and you have time or whatever you need it, you get on. So, um, and even on my sound notifications, my sound notifications obviously are uh, they text and phone calls and then alarms that I have set up. And that was the one that went off right as I started talking because I have alarms that go off during the day and they are just basically prayer reminders. They are not someone trying to get hold of me. They are notifications from myself to myself. It's 11 o'clock. You need to pray for the husbands, the men in your life at three o'clock, and I'll have to do it later. Um, you need to pray for your children at five o'clock, pray for Steve. And so those are the things that I have going on. Now you, you do whatever works. Those times may not be the best, but at least the sounds that are going off, I have control over and I don't get sounds for anything else. Um, because what I have found, if we don't do that, this becomes a pacifier and we can't even make it through the day. I was listening to a podcast by, I think it's John Eldridge, who actually has a really good app in here called Pause. You take a one minute pause every day. And I am telling you, it just, I just, if you want it, I'll put a, a link to it. You, I don't know what it's actually called, but you just stop. I just stop tune everything out. I sit still and he drive. He has beautiful music and pretty picture. And it's basically, I give you everything and everyone to God. I give everyone and everything to you, Jesus. And so, and then it waits a few seconds and talk. Anyway, it's really, it just will s slow you down. And he said he found 
that at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. are the best times to do it because when we're in the middle of craziness. And so that is a way you could, I have control over it. I don't get sound notifications for it. I do have it written on my calendar, but I miss it a lot of times. I don't do it every day, but when I do, it just lowers my heart rate, which is good. Okay, the next one, have you ever taken a social media fast? Maybe for a week, maybe for 21 days. I know our church did this a year or two ago. I had actually started uh, fasting from Facebook and from all of it for a while. Now, I'll be really honest. I still fast from Facebook. And you're going, how do you fast from Facebook? You're on Facebook right now. Well, here's what I do. I use it for my business. And I check. And when I get on, I don't even see my feed. I get on and I start looking at my notifications and I look at the things that I know I need to respond to or use to grow my business. So that's how I use, uh, I don't I don't get on the feed. Um, Pinterest, I have sort of gone a little bit back on that. Um, and in the evening, I may look at it, but pretty much five minutes, that's it. And it's not every day. Um, what I do, it's mostly to look and see if my kids have posted any pictures. So that is how I do that. But there was a time I wish that I could go for 21 days and never get on social media. Unfortunately, since we have a very small team for my business, I am still, although they can do all the mechanical parts of social media, I still have to make decisions along the way. So someday, that could be a goal next year, that I could take a real 21-day social media fast. If you haven't ever taken a social media fast, I would encourage you maybe to start with seven days and then wait two or three months and do 21 days. And I would do it, we're, we're talking about you, mom. You need to set a good example. Just like I said, I wanna set a good example for my kids when they were in high school. You need to set a good example for your kids now. So you go on a social media fast for seven days and show them that you don't have to see, you know, you're not on there. And then maybe the next month, talk to your spouse, whatever, you know, men, some of them are into it, some of them aren't. But um, I know the men in our family aren't really into social media. But um, decide, and maybe your family goes on a social media fast, and then you choose activities to substitute for those times that you would normally be on social media. So that's another one. Like I said, my phone is a tool for me. There are things that I do every day on my phone. I use it to clock my time so I can sort of see how much time I'm spending on different businesses. I use it to read my Bible every morning before I get out of bed. If I have a book that I'm reading that's online, I use it here. Those two things, read my Bible and um, read my book. I'm actually um, in the process of changing that and moving my Bible app and my books to, I think it's a Kindle, I don't know, Hunter left one here. So once I do that, then I'm gonna charge my phone in another room. It will not be anywhere near my bedroom. And um, I will just use a regular old digital clock, alarm clock that sits by my bed. Now, we're gonna talk about that with kids, but that is another idea. Maybe you could wean yourself off of having your phone right there. Because I don't, even when I'm reading my Bible, I don't like getting other comments and I'm like trying to focus on that. And if on that Kindle, the only thing I have is the Kindle app and the Holy Bible app, that's all that's going to show up. And so I like the convenience of being able to read in bed when I can't sleep. Um, I have books. It just depends. Right now I'm reading a, a hardback book, so I have a little night lamp. But um, there are times I can't get my book on um, in paperback or hardback. So I do read it online. All right, so you need to set a good example, Mom. Uh, turn your notifications off if possible, whatever you can. Social media fast. Use your phone as a tool. And um, I will say, Andy Crouch, who wrote The Tech Life Family, let's see if I can find it. I probably closed it already. Um, he has a quote that I was going to read, and I didn't. I had it this morning, and I guess I got rid of it. Anyway, he is talking about uh, techno technology in your family. And here's what he has to say. Oh, come on. There we are. Well, there we go. 
the TechWise family follows this rule. An hour a day, a week a year, with an hour a day, a day a week, and a week a year with no technology. So one hour a day, everyone in the family does not have technology. One day a week, no technology. And then one week a year. I would start with just the hour a day and get used to it and sort of get going. But just think of how great the relationships that you could build with your family just by not being on this thing. So another thing that, um, oh, the other thing that I would suggest, let's see. Um, I'm not going to, we're going to move to kids. So. Set a good example, turn off your notifications, social media fast, phone is a tool, um, and then maybe put some boundaries, some limits on how much you're on your phone. All right, let's move to the kids. Um, and I'm going to talk about me. I didn't have phones, and even when my kids were here, they had dumb phones. So we had the TV, and I did have to limit it. I will say this, the first year I homeschooled just Ashley, she was in fourth grade, Hunter was three or four years old, and every day for one hour, he got to watch TV over there, because this was our schoolroom, and it gave me one hour of focus time with Ashley. I know, bad mom, bad mom, but that's what I did. I just had to figure, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a school teacher, but that's a, <laughs> excuse me, a lot different than having a toddler or a preschooler. The other thing um, I would do is right before dinner time, I would let them go in and watch a video or a show for 30 minutes. It gave me the opportunity to get focused, to prepare for Steve being here. Um, and Rose, thank you for your comments. I try not to pick up my phone at all on Sundays. Me too. The only problem is my parents call me on Sundays sometimes. So, But to me, that's more like, what's the phone supposed to be? So, what was I saying? 30 minute video uh, at dinner time, just for me. So that was sort of how I used it. Now we watched family movies and we would watch shows together, but overall we did limit the amount of time because the kids need to get outside and play. Whatever works for your family, and it may look different than my family, the biggest thing, oh my goodness, really? Low battery. I thought it was all charged up. Okay, we'll see how long this lasts. We don't want to use it as a crutch. Actually, I'm, I hate to do this because I have some really good stuff to read to you. I'm going to go get my charger. Not only am I a bad mom, I'm a bad Facebook Live person. So, sorry. Um, okay, so, don't use your phone as a crush. Don't use devices. My family doctor was telling me a story one time that he was treating a patient, and this is 10 or 15 years ago, and the mom said the child, he just can't fall asleep. He falls asleep to the TV, and the doctor, my doctor friend looked at her and said, um, um, or is there a TV in his room? And she said, yes. Well, I will not give you any medicine until the TV is out of his bedroom. Let's use that first. And here's the mom's response. She said, he won't let me do that. He won't let me do that? Who is in charge? This is a bigger problem than devices. And now this, your situation may not be the same, but listen and see if you have anything you could take away from this story in regards to phones, iPads, whatever. He, child, won't let me, mom, take it away. Who is in charge? This is really a parenting problem. Who is the parent? The same doctor friend of mine says um, when the child, he has, most all, all his kids are out of the house, but they still have a 10 or 12 year old. And when the 10 or 12 year old comes to ask for his phone, and he says, can I have my phone? The doctor says, whose phone? Uh, may I have the phone? Because the dad is teaching, hey, that is my phone that I am allowing you to use. There's another idea. If they're calling it their phone, I mean, who's paying the bills? Who bought it? 
So you might need to pull back and get a big perspective of whose phone it truly is. Now, I talked about this topic about a year and a half ago, and Christina in our group gave just an awesome answer about controlling phones or devices or screens. She says this is what their family does, and I hope it's okay. She let me share it a year and a half ago, but I'm going to share it again now. And this is their guide. You must have played outside at least 30 minutes. You must have read for at least 30 minutes. You must have done something creative or Legos blocks for 30 minutes. All schoolwork chores must be done. All toys picked up. Then you can have 30 minutes of screen time. For every 30 minutes more of screen time, you must do all of it all over again. She says our kids um, also earn hearts by completing jobs and they can use that because they have to have that done before they can actually use the screen. Did you hear that? 30 minutes outside, 30 minutes reading. I don't know if she said, but 30 minutes creative time and, um, and then all the schoolwork and toys picked up. Well, you know what? That's good because our kids do need to be outside. They need to be doing things that are creative. So maybe if we offer them the other options first, that would help get off of the screens as well. So the thing I like about Christina, as opposed to the mom at the doctor's office, she's the parent. She's told the kids what is expected. Have you told your children what is expected of them to be able to use their phone? And if you haven't, they don't know and so what are they going to do they're going to if if you don't enforce it one time out of ten they are going to keep trying over and over again to to because they're going to break you down that's what they want to do you have to be totally consistent on all of it i remember there was a time ashley was about five or six years old my mom was here steve was at a meeting and ashley kept coming out of her bedroom and i had told her not to and i I don't know, I'd spanked her a few times. And she went back in there, and I looked at my mom, and I said, I am going to win this battle. Because I wanted her to know, no, there is something you need to get in bed and stay in bed. So I stood at her bedroom door, and I held the doorknob until she fell asleep. There was crying and gnashing of teeth, probably on the other side, not really. Um, and she fell asleep right on the other side of the door. Now, am I being mean? You may not like that idea, but I wanted to teach her that when I ask her to do something, she needs to obey authority. She, God gave my children parents, and I am that parent, and she needs to respect that and obey that. And sometimes we enforce it. Now, there are still heart issues. I'm not saying we didn't deal with her heart either, but at that moment in time, we we're going to cut it off. And we weren't going to spend two hours with the kid or even 30 more minutes with the kid coming in and out. So that's another idea. Um, no screens in the bedroom. Screens only in the family room or the living room. Just like... Yeah, I think I haven't talked at all today so that I would have to say my voice and I'm going to have to slow down. <coughs> it's like right here. I should have had that peppermint oil before I came on. Screens are always charged in the same place. Let me show you something you could buy if you want to. <coughs> Maybe you, um, okay, here's the first picture if you can see it. My doctor friend lived down the street, and I was telling his wife, and that's how I ended up hearing all these stories. I'd been walking one day. I told her what I was going to be um, talking about, you know, that I was dealing with. And she said, oh, Carrie, you need to see our lockbox. It's a phone lockbox. So <laughs> here is the lockbox. I don't know if you can sort of see it. Uh, but the son's phone is in there. It's there's the phone. There's the journal. And here's the cool thing. On the side of the lockbox, there are holes here. You could put five or six phones in there, and you pull the charging cord out of each one of them. And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then they can all charge together. 
<clears throat> maybe you need to do that in the middle of the day. Maybe you need to put them all in there. The 10 year old does not have the combination to it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it's just a way to throw a boundary. It's, and then they don't even, there are so many things our kids have to make decisions and try to do right, that that might be one less thing. They just know it's not even available. All right. Um, there is a book I will put a link to. It's called um, Screens and Teens. I have not read it, but like my doctor friend said that that is one that he recommends to his patients when they're having a hard time. I think one thing we need to really think about, if you've ever heard me talk about Inspire, Inspire our kids to get their own control over this. Deal with their heart. Inspire means in spirit. And so we need to go to think about each child and what is their heart saying. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, because all our kids are going to react at different ways. I also think it's important that we take breaks from screens. Our kids need quiet time. They need boredom. Boredom leads to creativity. Not necessarily creativity on this, but hands, manual creativity, that type of thing. And I want to read something. Oh, I did want to show this picture. I meant to show it at the very beginning because this is how I sort of felt. Um, this is a mom, if you can see her, and she's on her um, phone, but she's holding the toy so she can help the little boy. And the little boy has a sign, and it says, Your phone keeps you close to the people far away, but far away from the people close to you. That's who had posted that. But um, isn't that interesting? Our phone is supposed to keep us close to people that we can't see. But the people that are right here, unfortunately, those are the ones that have the problem, that have to take the brunt of everything. All right. Emily P. Freeman wrote a book about choosing the best. I don't remember the title. But these are some quotes out of it, and I'd just sort of like to close with this. She says, um, when she was talking about getting things out of your soul and like cleaning, have an internal cleansing. She says, I don't mean that we should hold, we should not hold. I'm sorry. Does it mean we should hold to nothing? It means nothing should hold on to us. Nothing should hold on to us. Is this holding on to you? Is it holding on to your children? The only thing that should be holding on to us and we should be clinging to the most is Jesus Christ. What does God want? And I think it's important when you have kids, especially teenagers, when they can start to think for themselves, pose that question to them. What does God want? And let your kids answer this and it will come from within instead of you dictating it. Now, I think it's important too that we always deal with everything through the lens of scripture, including this. So put on your lens of scripture, if I can find my hair that's dragging. Um, and Emily had this to say, and I thought it was great, especially if we would keep our lens of scripture on, some of that other stuff may fall away. Here's what she says. Facebook, you don't get to interrupt me. Instagram, you don't have permission to tap me on the shoulder whenever you want to. Headlines of the news, I can read you all at once later. I don't need to know the minute news breaks phone. You're not the boss of me. I have good work to do. I have a life to live. I have decisions to make. I just thought that was so powerful that we, this is not the boss of us. You need to get control of this. And once you get control of this, you can role model that. And then you can work with your kids to get control of that as well. Let me see. My top demands me put my phone down when we are doing 101 of Richie. <laughs> now it's a habit. You know, and I will tell you, it's sort of hard when you have grandkids and you're watching them. And I'm like, the kids are tootling around. And I'm like, they're not. we're not always on the phone. I mean, there are lots of times we just sit around the table with the kids or the kids are playing or whatever. But it's so easy in the middle of the afternoon to sit on the couch and we're on the phone, and the kids are just playing with their toys, you know. And um, my, I, I know both my girls really struggle with this. And um, and they've done things. They've gone on social media fast. And I think that's helped. Hunter, on the other hand, 
he could care less about it. He barely checks email or he checks text when he knows that something's going on. But we have a group me, a family group me. I'm always like, hey, you might want to go check the family group me because there's some stuff in there for you. So, um, so he doesn't really, he's, I'm sure he struggles with other things, just not this. So, um, Oh, I have special, um, that's a really good idea, JR. I also have special sounds alerts for specific people, so I know it's someone I should respond to immediately. I do too. My kids are one, Steve is one. We, I have special sounds, and all those new spam ones, they have the same sound, so I don't even have to real, you know, read any of that. Someone else, I can't see. The rule of reading before screen time. And having only reading apps on the Kindle. I know, I hadn't really thought about that. That was actually my son's idea. When he came back this time, he was plugging in a clock in his room. I said, hey, what you doing? He says, um, oh, I don't charge my phone in my bedroom. This is a single 28-year-old. It doesn't even matter. But he is, I think, disciplining himself so that when he does get married, he's already in that habit, and they can work through that together. So... Anyway, if y'all have any questions, post them. Otherwise, I just thank y'all for being here and um, just for the comments and everything as well. And I was looking to see if there was anything else. I will post that uh, book that I recommend recommended later. Tomorrow, Christmas, uh, Three Clues to Keep Christmas, Christ and Christmas, the link's in the comments. And a week from Tuesday, Alternatives to Halloween, our October Facebook party. So... Well, thank y'all for spending time with me. Y'all, same here for notification. Yeah, I think a lot of us probably have some of that. Where are we? All right, thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. I will talk to you later. I am Carrie Beck with Out Homeschool My Child.